إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ به عز وجل من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد بيده مقاليد السماوات والأرض وهو على كل شيء قدير All praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise him seeking his help, his forgiveness I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last messenger and last prophet alayhi salatu wa salam my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, as you know, today we decided together to talk about the youth and what they are struggling with, what kind of problems we are facing. But before even that, before talking about them, we need to talk to us as a, as a parents, ourselves here. Do you think we are a good a role model for them to follow us with everything or we are missing a lot? Honestly, I'm talking about myself before anyone else. I am working as an imam, whatever you call me as a da'iyah, whatever. But even that, we have a lot of problems at our homes, really busy with our work, not giving them the full attention as they expected from us. Alhamdulillah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're not doing something wrong, but at least we're not giving them what they deserve to have. Before talking about the youth, we need to review together that decision we made before coming here we decided to come to this country. And the results of, our, of that coming, our children here. Maybe we didn't expect what we are facing right now with them, but at least we need to, to be uh, like a wise people to have that amount of wisdom to deal with the challenging they already facing front of our eyes. I just want to remember with you a part of the story of Ibrahim ala Nabina alayhi salatu wasalam. And in the other hand, we're going to look at Nuh ala Nabina alayhi salatu wasalam. Both of them prophets, both of them min ulil azm min al rusul. Both of them gave their entire life for the da'wah, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if we want to compare between the results here and there, what are we going to find? We're going to find here Ismail, and here, what is the name of the son of Nuh? Do you know that? Anyone can remind me? The person, he already going out through the الشاب اللي مات اللي غرق do you know his name? Sam برضو مصر I don't know I don't know that, that son maybe what is the affecting of him right now? we're gonna find one of them Nuh alayhi salam called him, Ya Bunayyar kam ma'ana wa la takum min al-kafirina qala sa'awi ila jabalin ya'asimuna min al-ma'a. Is that Sam Bardu? Is that the same person? That's what I'm talking about. Nobody knows that. Because he's nothing. But when we talk about Ismail ala bina alayhi salatu wa salam, we are talking about Ismail. But what is the difference? We have two prophets working the same giving the same time for the da'wah, giving attention to the community, everything the same. 
But what's different between here and there? You're gonna find Hajar here. And every single person in the Muslim community going to a Safa Wal Marwa to imitate Hajar. Imagine we are going to imitate a woman to do the same thing she did before. We are going to follow the steps of one of the women. In the other side, we're going to find Al Quran Al Kareem telling us that fact about. ضرب الله مثلا للذين كفروا امرأة نوح وامرأة لوط كانتا تحت عبدين من عبادنا صالحين فخانتاهما فلم يغنيا عنهما من الله شيئا. If I want to concern about the women like the wife of Nuh, she didn't follow his direction. She wasn't agree with him with everything. They have that disagreement between each other, each one of them going with a different direction. If we want to talk about this woman, we need to look at Nuh as the prophet. Are we doing the same like Nuh before asking our wives to be like Hajar? Are we doing the same with Ibrahim and Nuh السلام, following their direction? And Muhammad وسلم, came after والسلام, to give us the full example of the prophethood. And then to give us the example of the reality of the Muslim. How can I have that characters to be a real Muslim living in this dunya, having children, growing them up? Under that shadow, are we doing the same? Before talking about my wife and your wives, we need to ask ourselves what we're doing. I just reminding myself and the rest of the people in the first khutbah about a short story happened with me. At the beginning, when I came to America in 2004, I asked one of my friends over here, he's living like a long time, and I asked him, uh, do you advise me to come and bring my daughters here? I didn't have Anas at that time. I had two daughters. He said, listen, Sheikh, we really appreciate you, but I'm gonna give you the advice. Here you go. He said, if you have that tawafuq, I don't know how can I translate tawafuq, like harmony between you and your wife, Tawafuq, not just agreement, Tawafuq, that kind of harmony between you and your wife. At that time, I'm telling you, don't worry about anything. Bring your wife, bring your children, and don't worry. Man, man, stop. What about the schools, the public, so and so? What about the, he said, don't worry about anything as much as you have that harmony between you and your wife don't worry what about islamically so and so he said it's gonna come because you have a backbone at home whatever happened with them they're gonna come back to home and she's gonna observe anything she's gonna understand even before the talking she's gonna look at their eyes and understanding what's in you with these faces what's wrong with you man and they're gonna tell her what's happening and she's gonna correct redesign that mentality and she's gonna push them to do that good things otherwise you're gonna lose everything in your life not just your children you're gonna lose your credibility you're going to lose your dignity. You're going to lose yourself. You're going to lose even yourself. You will not find yourself. Because you're going to be, you know, This is the advice came to me. Based on that, I started to build my lifestyle over here. The first thing, in our life, our homes, our children. Once you have that relationship between you and your children, 
they will not face all of that problems. They're going to be a, a serious people. They're going to have the concept of responsibility. They're going to see what is the best way to achieve their goals, you know, to go through that. Otherwise, they're going to lose themselves. Here, we said we have Ibrahim and we have Nuh. What is the missing here? The wife. What is the advantage here? Ibrahim and Hajj. But we have the third point. The third point, it was the relationship between Ibrahim and Ismail. Ibrahim and Ismail. When I look at Nuh السلام, when he called his son, Ya Bunayyar, come ma'ana, qala sa'awi ila jabalin ya'asimuni in al-ma. It's telling me, it's telling me that son was really or completely isolated from his dad. No relationship, no con communication, no talking, nothing common between both of them. But when I look at the other side to see Ibrahim السلام, I'm going to find Ismail not just talking to his dad, but they are making dua together. وَجْعَلْنَا مُسْلِمَيْنِ لَكَ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِنَا أُمَّةً مُسْلِمَةً لَكَ وَأَرِنَا مَنَاسِكَنَا وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ They are making a dua together. It means they are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together. It means they are giving attention to the problem in the community together. It means they are trying to figure out how can we fix the problem in this area together. Not just like that. But, وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ أَنْتْ إِسْمَعِيلُ They are building the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together. It means Ismail wasn't isolated from his dad. You know, he didn't have a problem with his wife and she took him to the court and the court decided, you know, you're going to see him once a month. He didn't have that situation. They have a family. They used to work together. Somebody going to tell me, okay, listen, Sheikh, you missed something. What is that? Okay. Ibrahim السلام, he left Hajar and Ismail in this area and he left because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered to go back to continue his da'wah. And Hajar and Ismail, they were alone at that place. And because of that, we have the story of Zamzam and you know Sa'i bin al-Safa wal Marwa and I'm gonna answer you. It was a period of time commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are following the direction of Rabbil Izza, subhanahu jalla fi ula, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one can protect our children or not. Am I right with that? Let us see which environment Yusuf alayhi salam grew up in. Which one? He grew up in the castle of the king of Egypt. Do you think Egypt at that time, it was like a Muslim country? They are raising the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. No. They were worshipping the idols at that time. And they didn't have any, any idea about any common about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worshipping Rabbil Izzah. Because of that, they were surprised when Yusuf السلام, came to tell them Allah Azza wa Jalla is. You know, Ya Sahiba is Sijni Amma Ahadukuma. You know, and I started to talk to them about Allah, His existence, His ability, subhanahu wa ta'ala, His power. And they followed His direction with this point. Yusuf السلام, he grew up in a kafir community. But even that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala groaned him with the good mentality, good attitude, good faith, good heart, good mindset. And this is the hibah. This is the giving from Rabbil Izzah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can we conclude that conclusion? It's going to come with first me as a dad. What I'm doing, what I'm giving. Am I giving my time? 
Am I giving my attention? I'm not talking about the money, which the rest of the people talking about it. But I'm talking about my heart. Am I giving my heart to my children or not? And my wife, am I trying to be a qawwam? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described me, al-rijalu qawwamun ala nisa Am I trying to be a qawwam, like standing behind all of those people to protect anything, fixing any problem coming here and there? You know, am I trying to be that person standing behind that home? Just a backbone. I am here, you know, to defend my family and anyone coming to attack them. Okay, I'm here to protect them from anything. But am I trying to do that? How many times we are sitting with our children at home just to make a dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How many times we are trying to nicely bringing them to pray together? Just to sit, to read something. To keep them busy, nicely, not forcing them. Why you didn't pray at first? Okay, come on, come on, come on. I'm going to come to pray. Come on, stop. Allahu Akbar. When are you going to finish that man? What are you doing, dumb person? Come on. This is what's happening over there beyond our even imagination. Allahumma aslih buyutana. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله الملك الحق المبين وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد عبده ونبيه ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد My dear brothers and sisters Our children they are our future No doubt about that as much as we're giving them attention, they're going to be a good future for us. And again, in terms of Yusuf alayhi salam, usually I'm asking why he didn't go back to his home, the back home, you know? Why he didn't go back? Why I'm not going back to Egypt and you're going back to Yemen? or Iraq, or Palestine, or Urdun. Why? Why were not, why Yusuf salam didn't do that? But you know what happened? You know, and instead of that he did, he brought the rest of the family to be in the Kafir country. If we can describe the country at that time with this title, at least they weren't a, a Muslim regime. They didn't have it yet. Even Yusuf السلام, he had the authority and so, but he didn't force the people to be a Muslim. He didn't do that. Yusuf السلام, he invited his, the rest of the family to come to Egypt because of what? To raise the dignity of the Islam in this country. To raise the number of the Muslim in this country. To have that identity of the Islam to give them to the community as a gift because they're going to be like a rule model. Whatever happened from those people after that, this is the a mistakes. And we don't need to repeat the same mistakes Banu Israel did before in a different countries. Because of that, we need to build our future together. And this is actually the reason of being here today. Two years and a half, I stood up over here asking you to help us at the American Imams Academy to get a church to make it at the headquarters of the American Imams Academy. Imams Academy, the results is Imams. Alhamdulillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you did your work. Jazakumullah khairan. And because of your helping, we already got the church. Alhamdulillah. We had more than 170 students. Some of them standing over there collecting money for their future. But now, unfortunately, the place is not enough. The capacity 
not enough. We need another place. For more students, because we couldn't have the big number more than what we have. Because of that, we are here today to give the down payment of another church. It's 1.2 million. We already have, alhamdulillah, more than 700. We need the rest. And we are trying together to invest in this project. Any one of those youth, you're seeing them outside, he has no problem any time to stand over here to give the khutbah, I'm sure, better than me. And the person he made the adhan, you listened maybe, he's one of them. This is our performance. This is our work. This is the results which we have so far. Alhamdulillah, and by the way, those youth, inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're going to give a lecture to our children here around 8 o'clock maybe, as, the, as our brother announced. They're going to be like a model of the youth. Alhamdulillah, we tried and we could to observe them, fix any problems, talking to them, understanding their mentality, looking at what do we need from each other, and we are, alhamdulillah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at least facilitating the issues there. Because of that, we need your help today. You need to make your investment in another church. It's going to be a masjid and it's going to be another core for Imam's Academy. Do we agree with the mission? Nobody answered. Subhanallah. Nobody answered. Do we agree with the mission? Allah is al khair. Allahumma inna nas'aluka nusratan li ibadika fi Filistin. اللهم مكن لدينك في الأرض واشرح له قلوب الناس اللهم مكن لدينك في الأرض واشرح له قلوب الناس اللهم مكن لدينك في الأرض واشرح له قلوب الناس هيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا اللهم أعنا على ما بين أيدينا من عمل وأنجزه لنا وحقق لنا مرادنا في طاعتك واكتبنا من العاملين اللهم اجعلنا دائما من الساعين في سبيلك اللهم اكتب خطانا في موازيننا لا تحرمنا أجرا ولا تضيع لنا جهدا ولا تشتت لنا شملا اللهم احفظ بيوتنا آمنة من مكر الشيطان اللهم احفظ بيوتنا آمنة من مكر الشيطان اللهم احفظ بيوتنا آمنة من مكر الشيطان واجمع علينا شمل بيوتنا واحفظ علينا نفوسنا وقلوبنا وعقولنا وأبداننا معافاة من كل سوء يا رب العالمين اللهم إنا نسألك نصرة لعبادك في كل موطن من بقاع الأرض وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين My dear brothers and sisters and sisters please if you hurry and, 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 and I forgot to, to mention about brother Muhammad Saeed when he passed away we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him the rahma and shower him with the mercy Allahumma ameen ya rabbal alameen if you rush to go, please, please, please. Wallahi, we drove around 20 hours from Dallas, Texas up to here. Just to stand to seek your help. A kind of appreciation of that, even if you're going to give a 10 bucks. Please, don't leave without leaving anything behind you. Maybe it's going to be the, the, the main hasanat, we're going to find it. We are investing in the people as the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, used to do in the Mecca time, the Meccan time, invest in the people. And those people, they hold the da'wah in the whole country. Before going to Texas, I was an imam in Toledo. And I used to come, not to this masjid, in the Al-Huda Masjid before. Do you remember that building, the humble building? We used to come over there. We used to work and build the shabab. And our shabab, alhamdulillah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are holding the da'wah in Toledo, Ohio too. Allahumma lak alhamd. This is our mission. That's what we submitted ourselves to that. Allahumma taqabbal minna ya rabbil alameen. Jazakumullahu khayran wa aqim as-salah.